Okay, boys and girls, so as the snow comes down very hard, today we're going to be talking about the top survival knives of 2022. Now, in this video, if you're a fan of the channel or already subscribed, as I recommend you do, this video we're going to be focusing on not necessarily new survival knives or the latest and greatest of survival knives of 2022, but rather I picked a handful of quality blades that have proven track records that are very solid and honestly tools that I would choose to use if I was in a survival situation and these are honestly the knives that I run in survival kits, uh, vehicle survival tool kits, stuff like that. So these are true to form real survival knives that I trust in, I trust my life to. So that's kind of where we're coming at from or that's the angle we're coming at in this video or coming from in this video and as always guys please don't forget to comment like share subscribe and check out that patreon so that you guys can stay up to date with all the latest things on the channel okay now let's jump into Okay, so like I mentioned earlier in the video, if you're familiar with my top bushcrafting knife videos, this one is going to be pretty similar in the way that we break it down. So starting off, first knife we're going to talk about is a Victorinox, and this is the Victorinox Ranger, and this is my top pick for survival. Now in my bushcrafting video, I talked about the Victorinox Farmer, and I really do like the Farmer. I think that it's probably the perfect tool set for bushcrafting, but in survival, what I really like about the Victorinox Ranger is it's a it's a reasonably compact 91 millimeter uh, Victorinox so it's something that you're likely to carry on you and it has a very versatile tool set and a tool set that I find very useful for the wilderness so on this thing it's essentially like a bulked up Victorinox Huntsman which are also very popular but of course you have your saw you have a main blade you also have a smaller pen blade and you have a handful of other tools such as awls. You have, you have other tools such as an awl, a chisel, of course a corkscrew, and many other very versatile tools. So if I had to choose a hands down survival Victorinox, it would have to be the Ranger because I think I can do many, many tasks with this little guy. Now, of course, a Victorinox is probably not your number one choice for survival, but it is a really good choice for survival if you are choosing a Victorinox. Uh, hopefully you'll choose some bigger tools as well, but this is probably my number one rated survival, uh, survival Victorinox. Okay, so for me, what I'm more likely to run as a multi-tool in a survival situation is honestly a Leatherman. And while I do think that that Victorinox is great, the Ranger has a lot of pros, the ultimate bushcrafting and survival multi-tool, in my opinion, is the Leatherman Surge. Now, this is a Generation 1 Surge, as you guys can tell by the non-removable bits, but whether you have a Gen 1 or Gen 2, I have both a Gen 1 and a Gen 2 um, Surge. It's just the Gen 2 is in a survival camp at the moment as naturally you'd expect but either one are fantastic tools and once again having the pliers is really nice because it allows you to do many things that a Victorinox or similar multi-tools can't do in addition you have you know your serrated blade you have your plain blade you also have um really good file slash saw that is integrated so you can swap this between a file and a saw and then of course you have your all your can opener and just generally good purpose multi-purpose tools on the inside so a really versatile tool it is heftier definitely heavier than a victorinox and bigger but it is also more capable so keep that in mind and that is probably the tool, the multi-tool that I would realistically recommend, but both are good multi-tools for survival. Okay, so we're going to go jump into now budget uh, survival blades, and this is not the place where I'd recommend you to stay forever. I do like these budget knives, and these are solid budget knife offerings, but at the same time too, uh, budget bushcrafting blade or budget survival blades are a place to start and hopefully kind of get you in the door to get gain it, survival experience, survival skills. And these are also knives that, you know, if you want to throw in a backpack, if you want to throw them in a vehicle, if you want to have these in areas where 
risking a more expensive survival knife might be, you know, a bad idea, then these budget knives are kind of that stopgap. They give you a good blade that you can use realistically, but also not something that you won't cry if you lose. So the first one, and as I'm sure surprised no one, is the Cold Steel SRK, the full sized. Now the compact SRK is an okay survival blade. I just think that it's a little bit too small for my own personal likings. So the full sized SRK, and this one is an SK5, high carbon, but this blade in general is a really solid pick and some people aren't the largest fan that it's of course not a full tang but at the same time this is an extremely durable knife i've never broken it and i've abused the hell out of it and for under 50 dollars, it's a really hard blade to beat uh, in that kind of category for a survival knife. Of course, like I said, if you're looking for knives to throw in your truck or your car or whatever you drive, this is a really solid choice. And I would always recommend if you do run this knife in kits, do practice with it, be experienced and knowledgeable with the tool and understand how to use it. But aside from that, really great, fantastic option. Now the next one here is going to be the Ontario Knife Company or OKC Rat 7. Now I do like the Rat 7 a bit more, especially for a truck-based or vehicle-based survival knife because it is a little bit bigger. But overall, the Rat 7 is essentially like a cheaper or more budget version of the SC6. And I really do like the SC6. I think it's a very capable kind of multi-use knife that can span a wide variety of tasks. So in a similar way, the Rat 7 is kind of the budget alternative. It does have an inch longer blade, so it is a little bit a little bit longer, but it is a fantastic option. It is, of course, made in the US and it has a full tang that you can see. So it's a pretty good option in those regards. Uh, so it is a little bit hypothetically more durable than something like the Cold Steel SRK, but it is, once again, under $100 and you can get them right around I believe $70, 68 ish dollars. So pretty affordable knife, pretty good overall blade, and uh, nothing to really complain about. Of course, not as refined as an SE6, but it is a pretty good budget alternative. So let's talk about some more expensive knives that are fantastic survival options. And honestly, any of these knives are a pretty great landing place for after you've kind of gained experience in survival, you know what you're doing, and you're just looking for that upgrade to take it to the next level. Now, not to sound too repetitive, the next one is actually the SE6. And the reason why is essentially, especially if you're coming from something like a Cold Steel SRK, the SE6 is really just a refined version of the Rat 7 that we talked about. Of course, it has a little bit shorter blade so it kind of depends on what you like the sh longer blade is a little bit more useful for things like batoning but the six inch is a little bit more wieldable and a little bit more carryable so once again like i said the rat 7 makes a really nice vehicle based survival knife this might actually be a little bit more carryable uh, from a user standpoint of course it is also a little bit more refined in ergonomics but overall the SE6 is, once again, similar to the Rat 7, a very great multi-purpose kind of tool that can fit into many different tasks, or a knife that can do a multitude of tasks, from shelter building to trailblazing to even skinning out game animals and crafting in general. So the SE6 is a really great option. It's very, it's very comfy in the hand, and once again, because it is so well built, you can hold it in many different ways that allow you to use it, you know, choked up or choked back to do whatever you need to do. Now, it's not gonna be the best chopping blade because it is on the lighter side and of course on the smaller side, but it is a fantastic option. And of course, I have mine set up scout style uh, because I really like that way of carry with this knife. So moving on up is the Falkneven A1. Now the Falkneven A1 is a regular around here, uh, around the channel, because Falkneven as a whole makes knives that are really well versed to cold environments and cold climates. So of course, that being said, living in Alaska, the A1 and the F1 Falknevens kind of fit the bill for a lot of different tasks. Now, the Falkneven F1 was one of my favorite or best bushcrafting knives of 2022. The A1 is a 
the best survival because it is larger, it is of course thicker, but it also holds a lot of the properties that the F1 had. Of course, it is full tang, but it has a rubberized handle, which is very comfortable in the cold. In addition to that, uh, the A1 and F1 and all of the Falcon even kind of F series knives have a very strong track record. And I think that's the biggest thing. Uh, a lot of these knives, of course, like the SC6, Rat7 and SRK have a fantastic track record uh, of people really using these knives, really putting them through their paces. But the A1 is also on that list. It has a track record of military and of course, outdoor use from people like people who are in search and rescue and survivalists in general. So this is not a new knife by any means. Really none of the knives we've talked about are that new, but they do have a very strong track record of people that do survive or will live in the, wil live in the wilderness uh, on a regular basis using the heck out of these blades. So that is a good point to note for them. Now I will say the Falcon Even A1 is definitely a very thick knife. If that is something that you're against, I think it's a little bit overbuilt, but it is what it is. It is honestly a pretty tanky blade. So at least it will be good for doing things like chop or doing things like batoning. The other advantage that the Falcon Even has over all the other knives actually that we've mentioned so far is the fact that it is a VG10 laminate. So VG10 is not the most rust resistant steel, but it is laminated by a stainless steel. So you have very good stainlessness through the laminate and then the VG10 itself is not a bad stainless steel by any means so it is also pretty corrosion resistant itself so overall this whole package here is going to probably be one of the most rust resistant knives that we're that we'll talk about in this lineup so overall that might be another reason why you might consider the Falcon even A1 or even the S1 though I do think the S1 is a little bit small for survival purposes I would probably stick to the A1 because the A1 is around the size of the SRK and the SRK is kind of the minimum size that I would recommend for a survival knife understanding too that uh, some people might say you know why are you recommending such a large knives for survival and that's primarily because in a survival situation the knife might be the only tool that you have and in that case you need a tool that can build shelters that can skin game and do a multitude of tasks ranging more than just a camp knife okay so the next one and the last SC on the list I, I promise there's going to be no more SEs, but it's going to be the SE Hoogless 2. Now, this knife is the Hoogless 2, so this is the sm slightly smaller version of the Hoogless. And I really do like the Hoogless. I actually have the Artac 2, which is essentially Ontario's version of it. But the Hoogless 2 fits a very unique role because it is a it has the similar or the same width and the same thickness as the Hoogless and the Artac 2, but it is a little bit smaller. So it's a slightly more compact tool, and this would be another excellent vehicle-based survival knife, especially if you are running a vehicle setup that doesn't have an axe or a hatchet, that doesn't have a saw, and you're looking for more of a one-tool option. The Hoogless 2 kind of fits that role where it, it is a bigger knife. And, I'll pull out the uh, SE6 here to show you guys. Uh, it is certainly a bigger knife, but it is also not totally unwieldy. So there's an SE6 and a Hoogless 2 to kind of compare them. I'll try to line them up so you will notice that it is noticeably bigger. The uh, Hoogless 2 is right, right around 14 and a half inches in overall size. So it is... So she is a big girl, but once again, that lends its hand very well to especially doing things like chopping and collecting firewood, building shelters, and doing those larger tasks. So the Hoogless 2 is great for those kind of tasks and purposes, and that's why it earned its place on this list. Okay, last but not least, once again, I'm sure if you're familiar with the channel, you totally saw this one coming, but it is the CRK Pacific. Now, like I've said in many videos in the past, this is my technical truck survival knife, still nice and icy cold, but this knife for me, the reason why it is my truck survival knife and why it's on the list is it is an extremely capable knife and I've used this extensively with my own survival training and this is just the nice 
or this is just the knife that I feel the most comfortable with. It's very versatile, but yet it's large enough to handle bigger tasks, not, not quite chopping-like tasks, but it is big enough to handle quite a few batoning tasks. This can really make some fast work of firewood for firewood collection, and so it really is a great knife for, in that regard. It's also very comfortable, and similar to the Falkneven A1, this one is made out of CPM S35VN, so it's also very rust-resistant. Maybe not the most rust resistant, but it's certainly in my environment it has never rusted on me and I've never had a problem with corrosion or rust build up on this blade. So for me, like I said, it's a very comfortable knife. It's a very usable knife. I did make some light modifications to it to improve its usability for my own personal, for my own personal stance or tasks. But overall, this blade is super comfy and very, very functional for what I need it to do. And while I know CRK Pacifics aren't the most easy knife to come by, they are really fantastic and they can do many, many things, uh, many different tasks very well. So this definitely has to be my number one and on the list, of course, because it is one of my survival knives that I use a lot for survival practice and it is an overall fantastic blade. So that is the CRK Pacific. Once again, it's definitely the most expensive and probably the hardest to obtain of all these tools. But if you really get any one of these knives, you will not be disappointed. It will certainly serve you well. And all of them are good great knives. Of course, like I said, if you do choose a budget offering, I would recommend practicing with it if it's going to be a truck-based or vehicle-based survival option. And in that case too, I would also recommend, you know, for a personal knife that you're going out to the woods on a regular basis with, choose something that's solid and probably a little bit more comfortable, maybe something like an SE6, Falcon Even A1, or even a Hoogless maybe even a Pacific if you can swing it. So those are my choices. Uh, as always, guys, God bless, and I'm out.